Coach T is very intense. Um, it's just like what you see is what you get. She's transparent and she's genuine and she's never gonna switch up. She's a player's coach. She obviously plays. She was very successful when she played, which is why we all listen to her. Kind of crazy because I actually played with her uh, and against her for so long. So I knew that she was gonna be a tough coach because she was tough as nails as a player. I think Coach T resembles um, player T, somebody who shows up and is energetic, enjoys their job, loves their job, high accountability. Um, plays hard, goes hard, but also has a good time doing that. Plays with a lot of emotion, some tenacity. Coach T. They tried to count me out. I'ma go count me in. Fill up my bank account. Now I got something to spend. Uh, nah, uh, nah. Who is Tanisha Wright? Simple, laid back. I'm very chill and calm. I walk to my own beat, I guess. I've had the opportunity to travel the world as a young person and so, you know, enjoyed all those experiences and, and now it's just chill out, cool, have a good time, do the things I like to do. Young Tanisha is completely different than this Tanisha. <laughs> I was a little menace when I was a kid, which is interesting because now I'm completely different. Growing up in the projects, I was into all kinds of sports, football, basketball, kickball, bike riding. Like we used to go into the, to the woods, the backwoods and jump our bikes. Started playing basketball from a young, young age. I don't know who was the first person to put, put the basketball in my hand, but I know my love for basketball came from both living in New York and in Pittsburgh. Me and my friends, we lived on the basketball court. When I tell you lived there, we lived there. You couldn't, couldn't pry us off the court. I wouldn't say young Tanisha knew who she was. I think that's um, ever evolving. Even now, I'm still learning things about myself just because for, for so long, there's been a sacrifice because of my focus um, to my profession. And now is the best time to be doing it. I'm grown, I understand my likes, my dislikes. So I'm enjoying this phase of where I am now. All my family are um, Brooklyn natives. I'm in a generation that used to play crate basketball. You put a crate up on a tree or on a, on a, a light pole and you shoot the basketball in the crate. I'm in the age where you grew up playing on the street, you know what I mean? On the concrete, you fall, you get up and you get at it again. I grew up playing against all boys, but you get a toughness with that too. So that journey has really been a huge part of my, of my basketball journey as well. So I think I knew I'd make a career out of playing basketball um, once I got into college, to be honest. Growing up, I just played basketball because it was something fun to do, and it was something that kept my friends and I out of trouble. I had a pretty good career in college, and I think that kind of put me on a stage to really try to pursue this after college. And obviously, the W had been created by then, so it became more of a reality. As far as coaching, I don't know when I really realized that. I think my, my latter years, when I just became more of a vet, when you do that, you become more of a mentor for the younger kids. I had the luxury of playing along Sue Bird, who um, was such a great teacher. That became more of my reality um, as I got older in my career, and I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed that, that part of it, mostly because it was teaching just younger kids the tricks and the trades and the things that I knew to have longevity in the league. My journey as a player, I think, um, you know, by, by the time I got to my senior year, I knew that I'd probably be drafted. Where? I have no idea. And quite frankly, I prayed and hoped that I was going to get drafted to Minnesota. That didn't happen. <laughs> I got drafted to Seattle, which was one of the best things that ever happened to my career. I was able to spend 10 long years um, in Seattle under um, two different coaches, which taught me a ton. Um, throughout my time there. Met some of the closest friends that I still have to this day. Obviously, I won a championship there, um, so that doesn't get lost ever, but the friendships and the relationships that I made there and I built there were really special. From there, I went on to New York for two years, which was, I mean, it was a cool experience because I was going back home. So the opportunity to be able to go back home 
and play in front of my um, friends, to play in front of really my family, and to represent the, the city of Brooklyn was really special. My family really did a great job of showing up and supporting. So I spent a year in Minnesota and then went back to New York to uh, finish my career. We weren't very really good in that time, but it was such an enjoyable season because I knew it was my last season. So I went in there with the mindset of like, I'm gonna enjoy this season. I'm gonna have fun no matter what the record is, no matter what the score is, I'm gonna enjoy that. Yeah, that was a cool time. So like I said, my last years, especially my last years in New York, I became more, more of a mentor. Yes, I was playing and I was still playing at a, at a high level. I was mentoring the younger kids, the Britney Boys, the Kia Stokes, like the Erica Wheelers, like all those had came through New York at that time. Even teaching a, a, a semi-older Tina Charles, you know what I mean? It didn't really come until I took a season off. And Bill had said some things, hey, would you like to coach? Do you think you're interested? And I was like, nah, I don't think so. Like, I'll do what I do on the court, but off the court, I don't know how interested I am. So in 2017, my college coach had asked me, like, hey, are you interested in coaching? And I was just like, I don't know, I don't know. So she was like, all right, this is what I'm gonna do. I have an opening, I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna go search for another coach. If I don't find anybody, I'm gonna come back to you. So she didn't find anybody that she liked. She came back to me, I was like, hey, are you interested? It's here, it's Charlotte. I was living in Charlotte at the time. I was like, I don't know, I really don't know. But you know what, I'll do it, you know what I mean? I'll do it for a year. And I did it and I really enjoyed it. So I spent four years on the college scene um, before I went to pros and then I went to Vegas. My first year coaching in the Dell was the bubble. I did that with Vicki Johnson, who is now an assistant in Atlanta with us. See, the bubble was crazy, but I got two years in Vegas under Bill Lambert, who obviously is a Hall of Fame coach. That's that's just the journey of how I how I got to where I am now. You never know if you're you're ready for those opportunities when you get those opportunities to become an HC. But what I've always put my hat on is that I was prepared for it. I had played um, my championship game against Atlanta. When I initially got the call, it was the end of the 2021 season um, for Atlanta. To have success, you gotta have great leadership. And so they shown that they were serious about the changes that they wanted to make in Atlanta. That was part of why I wanted to be in Atlanta, to change the perception, right? Atlanta had became a place where people perceived it as being unprofessional. To get to the finals two or three times, I played 14 years of my career and only been there once. So for an organization to have to have a short history and to have had done it for two or three times already, like you can't take that lightly. So you know there's support behind it. That made it intriguing to want to come to Atlanta. Ryan Howard, the number one overall pick, the Atlanta Dream Draft Room celebrates. They have their young woman. Ryan Howard is the first pick of the 2022 WNBA Draft. Being able to receive the number one pick in 2022 was, it was awesome. It was awesome because, you know, when you take over organizations, that's not always the case. When Dan and I came in here, we wanted the player experience to be super important. We knew exactly who we wanted. There was no ifs, ands, and doubts about it. We had obviously studied that draft. I saw Ryan in 2018 as a coach for Charlotte and knew then how special Ryan was. To have a player of that caliber, Ryan is generational talent. She's gonna have longevity in this, in this league for years and years to come. And to get a player like that to jumpstart, quite frankly, my career, right, as a, as a head coach, we were excited. <laughs> like that's, that's the, I know it's a simple um, emotion to describe it, but the excitement was, was top notch. Anytime you start out um, as a young HC, I think one of the most important things is that you have to build relationships, right? The players have to feel like they know me, I know them, that they can come to me. Otherwise, it just becomes like, this is my coach, this is a job, and there's no relationship with it. Some of the vets I've already had relationships with. I've coached D-Rob, I've, I've also played with D-Rob. So to have um, somebody like Danielle Robinson's buy-in is easy. And then just holding them to a standard, I think there's nothing that we ask of the players that we're not willing to, to show ourselves and to do ourselves and we hold ourselves um, to that accountability as well. I try to approach it like I'm also their teammate. The way that we're, we're playful, we have a good time together, we joke, we laugh. I think one of the most important things as an HC is that you pick the right staff. 
not being afraid of bringing people in, especially from an assistant coach standpoint, that are more experienced than you. I think that that's super important to, to your progression as a head coach, especially as a young one, you're continuing to learn and you need people that you can learn from. We added Alicia Gray, obviously from Dallas. What we knew about Leash was that she was somebody who was just a baller, who had great skill set, who can come in and really add to this team's firepower. Obviously, we already had Cheyenne Parker, who is one of the most slept on players in the WNBA in terms of her skill set and what she brings to a W team. So to watch both Leash and Cheyenne get their first time All-Star bids this year was really special. And then obviously we had our second time All-Star in Ryan Howard. Ryan is the complete package. And so being able to have three of them on one team really just shows what we're doing here in Atlanta and how we're trying to build here in Atlanta. I think they also understand that doesn't happen unless they have great teammates and they fill in pieces and gaps that we need in order for them to be able to have the type of years that they're having. The fan culture here in Atlanta is dope. I mean, they show up every single night. Our marketing team and our, our business side does a great job of creating the fan experience, tying it into the culture of Atlanta, right? And so every single time you come to an Atlanta Dream game, it feels cultural, right? From the music, from the food, from the the, the attitude, the feel, like the drip wall, all these different things, what we're showing and what we're putting out there, they want to be a part of that, right? It's a lifestyle. We're trying to sell that not only on the court, but also off the court. You know, I've grown into myself. I was a little tomboy when I was a kid, and I've just, over the years, like, figured out who, who I am. I grew up around boys my whole life, so to me it was just like, I'm one of the boys, <laughs> you know what I mean? I think throughout college and throughout my professional life, I had to um, not learn, but really feel out like, nah, you're a woman, and feel confident in that. And so who I am today, I'm super confident in the fact that I'm this grown ass woman that has all these tons of experiences and I don't let people define what that means to me. I still got tomboy, tomboyish in me, right? But I'm also can, can throw on some heels and feel real sexy in that as well. As I look back um, on my legacy, for me, I really want to be known as somebody who was a servant leader that I gave to others, that I gave more than I took, that I was somebody who paid it forward, that I was somebody that I poured into others, that I was a family person, that I was loyal in anything that I did, that I was somebody that kept their word. All those things are important to me throughout all that, that my faith showed as well. That's a part of who I am and what I would want my legacy to be when I'm, you know, when it's time to go. I'm Tanisha Wright, and I'm made for the A.